The Unshackled Waves, episode 167. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Australian politics finally got colourful after a pretty dry two weeks dominated by tax policy. This was thanks to a war breaking out between Liberal Democrat Senator David Linehelm and Green Senator Sarah Hanson-Young. Linehelm 30 heard uh, Hanson-Young say men should stop raping uh, women during a Senate debate about arming women with tasers and pepper spray in the aftermath of Eurydice Dixon's rape and murder. Linehelm told but her to stop shagging men. Since then, a lot more has been said by Linehelm about Sarah Hanson Young to the point where she is threatening legal action, and other politicians and the media have called on Linehelm to withdraw his comments and apologise. Linehelm has said, however, he has no intention of apologising. Although Linehelm's conduct has divided opinion among his libertarian base, it has gained him much support from those who are fed up with feminism and political correctness. To analyse this political episode, I'm joined once again by the Unshackled political editor Michael Smythe. Michael, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Tim. Now, last week's show was quite a dry political subject where we talked about uh, tax and a bit of energy policy uh, as well. But uh, this, uh, well, the past uh, week, a week and a half, po po Australian politics has gotten uh, quite colourful thanks to the uh, war that's broken out between uh, Senator David Linehelm and Green Senator Sarah Hansen uh, Young. Now, there, there's been a lot said by both parties, especially uh, a lot of colourful language from uh, David Linehelm, but we should go back to the uh, beginning, how this blew up and it it was in the the last uh, sitting week in the Senate where uh, Senator Fraser Anning who's now with uh, Bob Catter's Australia Party uh, put forward a motion in the Senate to legalize non-lethal means of self-defense for uh, women uh, uh, such as tasers and pepper spray this was after the uh, rape and murder of uh, Eurydice Dixon in uh, inner Melbourne and then Green Senator Janet Rice, who's from Victoria, said the, the last thing that women need is to be lectured by men about uh, women's safety. And then uh, allegedly Sarah Hansen Young uh, interjected, uh, saying, yeah, they should stop raping men. And so Lineham responded, then, then sh shop shagging men. Now, uh, they, this exchange can't be verified because it's not in in hindsight. They don't, they don't if they picked up every single interjection that that was made in in Parliament in Hansard, well, there'd be a lot of stuff in there. And then there was a exchange afterwards where Sarah Hansen Young. Uh, uh, asked David Linehelm, can you confirm that you said that to me? And he said yes, and she call, uh, called him a creep, and he told her to uh, fuck off, which is not the first time David Linehelm's said something like that. <laughs> not at all, and it won't be the last either. Whether he remains in the Senate or not, it will not be the last time he says anything like that. Uh, and of course, Sarah Hanson Young decided to put all this on the record, saying how you know offended she was by it, and asking him to uh, with withdraw. Uh, and so that that broke uh, late uh, last week. And uh, f for that time being, everyone was like, "Oh yeah, uh, we're, we're not surprised that this exchange uh, took place." But then it really blew up when uh, David Lineham was invited on the the Outsiders program with Ross Cameron and. Uh, uh, Rowan Dean and he said that the reason that he said it and we're paraphrasing here uh, so you know it's not us making the comment we're just quoting what David Linehelm said because this is the, the bit where the, the legal action was, was threatened uh, David Linehelm said that the rumours of her liking men uh, are well known in the, in the parliament now I don't know about these, these rumours I'm sure there's a lot of rumours in parliament but that is the, the statement that really uh, turbocharge this because it was and also because it was said outside the parliament which is not privileged which means you can be sued well what is the actual nature of the comments what is the exact word for word comments that he made outside yeah, say that, to uh, studio 10 for example and is it the same as what he said in parliament or is it somewhat he, different uh, he was trying to explain the context of why i said uh, to her stop shagging men because she's rumored to have had 
boyfriends. So, and the, this was interpreted by Sarah Hansen Young as, uh, or she said it herself, as being slut shamed, which that's her personal business. Uh, who, uh, you know, she, uh, she she wants to have uh, relations with. But the 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 point, the reason why uh, I think Linehow made this uh, remark is because ever since the death of Eurydice Dixon, we're seeing this. Oh, there, there was already feminist hysteria about uh, men being natural sexual, sexual predators, but it's basically exploded after this, where uh, Malcolm Turnbull, Daniel Andrews, Bill Shorten have said all men need to take uh, responsibility for, for, for her death, and that even uh, telling a, uh, a joke about uh, women is, is a gateway to domestic violence and, and rape and murder. You know this as well as I do. There is a hell of a lot of heckling that goes on in Parliament. And so if you say, you know, if Sarah Hansen Young or any other person for that matter, even not just not just a woman, even if a man is say, making some diatribe about, oh, men are rapists, men are irresponsible, men need to change their behaviour, yada, 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 whatever nonsense claptrap you want to spout off, of course someone's going to heckle you and say, stop shagging men then. You know, I mean, and you know, that's covered by parliamentary privilege. You know, explaining the context of it, of those particular comments that were made in Parliament, should not be considered as defamatory. And as you said himself, he only said that these were rumours that were going around. He didn't actually say, yeah, she, he didn't actually say that she was promiscuous or anything like that. And I don't think he cares if you know about a about a personal life at all. I I mean, he, yeah, he, he he doesn't care. But he was just you know making the point that uh, basically if you're going to believe that you know all you know men are, are sexual predators, then you should avoid them. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's it's one thing to it's one thing to vent in frustration at the horrible tragedy that happened to Eurydice Dixon. But it's another thing entirely to, to blame all men for, you know, all for that one crime. Now, a lot of people think that Hanson Young said all men are, are rapists. Uh, she, she denies that she said that. But when I was doing my research for this show, I don't have uh, Linehelm, I don't believe, claim that she said that is that uh, Hanson Young said, where's the effect they should stop raping men? So. That's an important clarification. Mm, mm, of course. Well, men, men should stop raping. Yeah, that's what. That's basically what she said. It's like you know. So what? And you know, this this actually offends me as someone who believes in equality of opportunity. You know, is that to say women can't do rape? I mean, I've, I'm not going to go into it here, but I've heard stories from men who have confided in me that they have been violated and in horrific ways and you know you can't say all men are rapists you can't even imply that and that's what it sounds like when she says men should stop raping that's the implication that she's making it's an easy inference to make it's an even easier inference to make than her reaction to Lane Helm's comments saying that accusing her accusing him rather of slut shaming her and uh, so initially, uh, Sarah Hansen Young, she demanded a withdrawal and, and an apology. But of course, David Linehelm's <laughs> the type of person who uh, doesn't uh, uh, apologize for, for, uh, for anything. He said plenty mm -hmm. of con uh, controversial things. He is, but because I, I've, I understand like where he's, where he's coming from with this is like the minute you start apologizing for one thing, then you're asked to apologize for, for everything. That's why, that's why Trump uh, doesn't apologize. And we'll get to the Trump. Uh, comparison soon. So uh, mm. then, as Sarah Hansen Young said, he should uh, resign, and then a uh, whole bunch of uh, major party uh, people got stuck into David Linehelm saying like how appalling the remarks were. Malcolm Turnbull, uh, Tony Abbott, uh, Julie Bishop, and uh, even uh, Peter Credlin uh, got involved uh, as well. Oh, Peter Credlin got involved. Ooh, stop the presses. Mm. Sorry, that I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but. Look, to be fair, what he's, he can't be prosecuted for what he said in Parliament. He can be censured by the Parliament, but he can't face any other legal repercussions for his words in Parliament. And that's the important thing to remember. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, if he is commenting, if he is discussing comments that he made in Parliament, 
that should be still considered as covered by parliamentary privilege, unless he made new comments and additional comments to what he made in Parliament. That's where it becomes tricky. Now, yeah. personally, I think his comments were... Some of his comments were a little distasteful, but yeah, I, I compared to some of the them. memes that you've seen, <laughs> that some of us might have seen over the past week or two, no, it's it's not really that offensive at all. Uh, since then, yeah, David uh, David Linehams doubled down at uh, every opportunity. Uh, in response to Turnbull's comments, he called him a pussy and a soft cock, and uh, he responded to um, Channel 10's entertainment reporter Angela Bishop's criticism of him by calling her a bigoted uh, bitch. And he actually went on uh, Studio 10 to explain, you know, why that that comment itself uh, wasn't sexist. And he also went on. Uh, ABC Radio with uh, Hamish McDonald to basically say no, like using the word bitch is a, isn't sexist. I, I, I call men bastard. Um, my abuse is uh, equal opportunity. Mm, exactly, and it should be noted as well. And it's very important here. There was a um, vex. Actually, no, sorry, I can't say that on a podcast. A gay rights activist mm, mm. who made who sent emails to Lion Helm about something and Lion Helm replied back succinctly and laconically and I quote go fuck yourself unquote yeah. Yeah. so yeah, yeah. He, he said go fuck yourself fuck off to, to heaps of people I've, I, I, I've lost count that's sort of, of you know his his style and it is you know I have uh, for those who don't know, I was in the Liberal Democrats for um, you know se uh, seven years. So you know I know um, you know David Lineham well, and you know, the Liberal Democrats well, and you know it's you know, David is the the, the the same as he is in private and you know public. He is not like an ordinary politician where they'll uh, you know ba basically you know put this you know good image on uh, in public, but behind the scenes they'll be completely different. Like you know Kevin Rudd, for example. You know he's I was basically. Just about to say Say Kevin Rudd. <laughs> yeah, he's basically, you know, what you're, you know, wh 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 how you see him in public is how he is, you know, all, all, all the time. Exactly. Look, I, I've only had the pleasure of meeting David once. I liked him. He did seem a little um, distracted when I met him, um, but he is one of those people who is genuine um, in terms of his crassness. I guess you could say. Would you say he's crass? I'd say he's crass. Yeah, uh, it's blunt as well. I'd also say that. Mm -hmm. Crass, blunt. Oh, sorry, crass, blunt. Synonyms here. Mm. But yeah, nice guy. Just very, very direct and to the point. Doesn't have time for anyone's nonsense. Yeah. What's happened with Sarah Hansen Young? It's taken it beyond, you know, where, uh, his normal uh, public uh, spats, and a lot of, uh, you know, media uh, people, even those who, um, you know, don't don't like the comments much, of, you know, he's obviously doing it to gain, you know, notoriety uh, and attention. It's the it's the it's a Trump strategy because Trump, uh, f uh, there, there's the famous. Uh, line that Jeb Bush said, oh, Donald, you're not going to insult your way to the White House. That's, that's, that's not going to happen. And of course, Trump managed to do that. So there is a precedent to what <laughs> Line Howe <laughs> is doing. And let's not forget he is up for uh, election in a year's time, and it's going to be a full half Senate election. So it'll need a full quota of 14.3%. He only got just above 3% last time when the, the quota was halved. So there's a steep uh, cli uh, hill for him to climb. Uh, there have been rumours about uh, possibly Mark Latham running for the Liberal uh, Democrats, uh, but now he's doing robocalls for, for One Nation, so we don't know sort of what's, what Mark Latham's uh, status is here. But uh, obviously, Lionhelm had to uh, try you know, something, and obviously the, this, the, the, this type of uh, strategy, it's you know it, 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 it's it's basically um you know he's he is his last hurrah if he wants to get back in to be honest i think he would have done it anyway regardless of whether he is up for re-election or not the, this has gone on a lot longer than uh, any of his other controversies because most of the controversies haven't really been publicized 
as much as this one. And everyone's just like, whoa, this is so unprecedented. Well, no, it's not unprecedented. He's done this before, and he'll do it again, whether he remains in the Senate or not, at the next general election. Hmm. It's the kind of guy he is. He's blunt, he's crass, he's to the point. And I mean, and I'm not saying that it's out of God, I'm saying that some actually semi-affectionately. But that's the way he is, and he's going to remain that way. He's not one of these vanilla politicians. Hmm. And as you pointed out, I was going to say, Kevin Rudd, who's lovely in public, but in private is apparently quite a monster, according to some of his former staffers. Now, I've also been around the, the libertarian movement as well for a number of years, and yeah, the, uh, you probably know this as well, that the libertarian community is always fractured. There's left libertarians, right libertarians, and there's uh, quite a few who support feminism who are appalled by uh, David's uh, remarks and think that he's set back the, the cause of the, uh, the, the liberty movement, but uh, a libertarian senator was, was never going to please anyone, I don't think. I mean, there's even libertarians in the United States who hate, you know, Ron Paul. Well, yeah, exactly, and that's the interesting thing. Um, when we do our Longman, um, or actually when we do our Super Saturday special, I'll be explaining um, the particular nature of some of the LDP candidates and why they are more conservative than libertarian or vice versa. But the point is that the libertarian, I made this comment once um, as a quip to a few friends of mine, libertarians are conservatives what protestants are to catholics really good at saying you're doing it wrong but never able to agree amongst themselves as to why and it, it's true you're gonna you're gonna have your conservative libertarians who are more like ron paul you're gonna have your outright libertarians like gary johnson and you're gonna have you know pro-choice libertarians you're gonna pro-life libertarians you're gonna have libertarians of all different streaks and shades and you, you pointed out the feminist libertarians as well. They can be feminist libertarians. They can be equalist libertarians. They can be all kinds. They, they come in all shapes and sizes, so to speak. And no, that's not a sexist comment. That's just a pointing out the fact that everyone has a different outlook, even in the libertarian. There's no, um, there's no collective hive mind in the libertarian amongst libertarians. They're, everyone is different. Uh, if you want to see uh, what I'm talking about, there's a libertarian Australian podcast, uh, Taking Liberties, which I actually uh, first appeared, appeared on. It was my first uh, foray into alt media. They also did a special on uh, Lionhelm's uh, comments. So uh, if you want to uh, basically see uh, some of the reaction from liber uh, libertarians, then I'd suggest uh, watching that podcast. We also have to remember who David Lionhelm's attacking here. It's not some noble, uh, upstanding, uh, you know, uh, morally uh, uh, morally wholesome uh, politician here. It's Sarah Hansen Young. I mean, she, she's she's gone after uh, Lionhelm uh, quite uh, quite a bit previously when David Lionhelm was attacking. Uh, childcare subsidies for uh, upper income earners. Sarah Hansen Young says, I will not hear this criticism from a middle-aged white bloke. And she said that quite a, quite a number of times. And then, because uh, she's, yeah, she's had to repay a lot of taxpayer funds as, as well. There was the, the famous whale watching trip with her daughter. She said that people who criticized her were uh, uh, grumpy old white men who were attacking a poor single mother. Mm, mm. Yeah, but you can't just bludge off, you can't just rob the taxpayer's dollar, that's the thing. And, you know, she, she's lashing out at them, she's blaming other people for her misconduct. Come on. You know, if, if, if Lionhelm had a, a thin skin like Sarah Hansen Young, he could have sued her for the comments she makes outside of Harvard. I mean, you know, some of those comments that she makes, actually, pretty much anything she says is objectionable. <laughs> But, I, 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 yeah, I did agree with Sarah Hansen Young, I believe, once. It was when she called uh, Barnaby Joyce uh, a pig after the paternity comments. I did agree with her then. That's the only time. Well, ev even a broken clock can be right twice a day. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was quite appalled by that. A lot of people were appalled by that comment. Maybe there's hope for her yet. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, but she, uh, the context of this as well, is, as we mentioned before, is the hysteria after Eurydice uh, D uh, Dixon's uh, death. And uh, she, uh, even though she denies that, you know, uh, that she, well, I don't think it is claimed that she said all oh, men are rapists, but it was dug up by David Linehound that she said after Eurydice Dixon's memorial was vandalized and they've uh, um, uh, just caught the guy who did that, uh, comedian Andy uh, Nolk, who he, well, he said that he did it uh, as an attack on feminism and also because uh, vac vaccines cause autism, but that's a whole different uh, issue. But uh, Sarah Hansen Young said uh, on one of the, the breakfast morning shows that uh, men need to stop being such morons and, and pigs and it's not women's fault that they, they can't control themselves. Now, uh, going back to the Hamish McDonald interview, he said, well, she never said all men, but where uh, Sarah Hansen Young said men, like she, if you, if you say men, you're referring to them in general, aren't you? That's exactly the implication. And, you know, if I was to say, you know, for example, if I would, let, let's flip it around. Let's say I were a public figure. Sorry, not, not just a semi-public figure like I am now, but a public figure. And I were to say all women are rapists or child abusers or something else that's equally horrendous. Everyone would be up in arms. Everyone would lose their minds. They'd be screeching for my head. They'd be, they'd be calling for me to be lynched. And yeah. you know what? People would actually say, you know what, Michael, you're an asshole. You should be, you should be killed. You should be lynched. You should be humiliated on the altar of public decency or whatever you want to call it. That's the thing. You know, there is a double standard here that yeah. says that men can be attacked, especially white men. But you say anything about a woman, oh, God, God have mercy. It's just a, it's just a friggin', you know, it's a, it's a fracas waiting to happen. It's a, it's a social crisis waiting to happen. Sarah Hansen Young has just made a mountain out of a molehill from her comments. That's what she does. You know, her comments are usually just nonsensical anyway. The only reason why... This is the cynic in me talking, Tim, bear that in mind. The only reason why she's taken such umbrage this time, she's affected such outrage this time, is because of the fact that she herself was in trouble in South Australia in terms of her Senate position. So she's going to make any play that she can to exploit David Lanhelm's foul mouth and foul temper and try and make it a political gang for her. You know, all the all the Greens voters in South Australia can think, oh yeah, Sarah's fighting for us. Stick it to that old white man. You know. Yeah, because he, he does look like the stereotypical old white man. So he is Oh, he looks like a stereotypical grumpy old white man. Absolutely. Mm. And, 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 you know, I've heard some people say that he is. I mean, I don't know how grumpy he is, but he does seem like he could be that kind of guy. And I like Lionel. I don't like his comments, but I like him. So, you know, I don't agree with him, but I like him. And there's been a lot of um, photoshops and adopted uh, quotes from what Sarah Hansen Young said that imagine if she said in response to um, Aboriginal violence in the communities that, you know, Aborigines needed to stop being such, you know, morons and pigs. She'd never say that. No, she wouldn't. She wouldn't say that about Muslims. She wouldn't say that about Aboriginals. She certainly wouldn't say that about women. She wouldn't say that about any minority group except grumpy old white men. Well, men are 50% of the population, not exactly a minority. <laughs> well, that's my point, isn't it? You know, we're, we're, we are, we are, we can't be victimized. That's the thing. We white men, we cis male white men cannot be victimized because we're the majority apparently and uh, david linehelm for uh, a while he has been trying to to counter this feminist hysteria around the issue of you know domestic violence he's he's questioned all of this money that's being uh, uh pumped into it so he he was reacting to basically well, this hysteria we were just talking about in the aftermath of Eurydice uh, D uh, Dixon's uh, death. And um, Bettina Arndt uh, did, who's quite a well-known men's rights act activist, she uh, addressed the, the Liberal Democrats National Conference. Yeah, the, the main thrust of this was that 
um, it was actually, you said it was Fraser who put Fraser the motion Anning, forward. Fraser yeah. Yeah, Fraser Anning from the Catter Party, who put forward a motion to allow women to arm themselves with tasers and pepper spray. Tasers, I probably wouldn't support tasers, but I would support pepper spray. Mm. Um, I actually have a close female friend of mine who actually carries a knife with her everywhere. Um, when she, cause she works, she walks to and from work and she lives in, in the city of Brisbane. She, and she knows how to use it as well, to be fair. She has to carry that. You know, if she was pulled over by the cops, God forbid, if she was pulled over by the police, she would be done for concealing a weapon or some sort of offense like that, even though she's not going to use it. It's there as a precaution. But who was it? Was it, was it you say it was Janet Rice? saying, oh, the last thing women need is to be lectured by men about women's safety. Well, that's kind of missing the point because women should feel safe. Women should take steps to make themselves feel safe as well. And, you I, know, it's not, it's not about how you dress. It's not about how you conduct yourself as much as it is, you know, being prepared for... And there's nothing wrong with men wanting to protect women as well. This was the point raised by Miranda Devine uh, in a mm. column, that Except women are the, the weaker sex. That's not an insult, that's just reality. And so it's, it's just a fact of life that, obviously, for women to be protected from the evil men out there, they need to be t uh, protected by good men. Exactly. And, Obviously, men need to help, you know, cre uh, allow women to protect themselves mm, by not uh, exactly making right. illegal self-defense. Exactly. You know, I mean, we can't rely on the state to protect us all the time. I mean, how, how long are police response times? They're a lot longer than it takes to commit a crime, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, do you lock your doors at night? Of course I lock my doors at night. Everyone yeah. should lock their doors well, at night. Well, you're enabling stealing culture then. We should be teaching uh, people not to not to steal. <laughs> people are going to do... People are going to commit crimes. And this is the unfortunate reality. And you and I both know this, which is why you ironically asked that question before. Mm. People are going to commit crimes whether they know it's the right thing to do or whether it's the wrong thing to do. If they're going to do it anyway. They're not going to care. If someone is, de if someone is starving, he's going to steal food. If someone is mentally unwell, he or she, it should be mentioned, or she here, it's not just white men who are mentally ill or could be mentally ill. Men or women, if they're mentally ill, they're going to act in a manner that is in, in is outside of the norms of society. That's going to happen, whether it's right or wrong, whether they know it's right or wrong or not is irrelevant. People are going to do what they want to do. We have free will. We're... We're sentient beings. We have free will. We have the ability to know right from wrong. We have the ability to disregard our consciences if we so choose on a whim. And it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. But the vast majority of cases, like the horrific violation that happened to Paul Eurydice Dixon, was done by someone who didn't care about right or wrong. And most men aren't like that. Most women aren't like that either, for that matter. You just hear the horrific stories in the media and from friends in general. But it's not something that a majority of people do. You can't just say, oh, stop men from raping women. Because, you know, by that token, stop women. Are you going to say stop women from raping men as well? Are you going to stop... Are you going to stop parents from raising their children properly? Are you going to stop... <laughs> you know, it, it, mm. it's absurd. The whole thing is absurd, which is why you pointed it out. Which is like, do you lock your doors at night? Well, of course I lock my doors at night. It's common sense. That's what it comes down and, to. And that's not victim blaming uh, at all. No, not at all. Like, no, nobody has the uh, deserves to uh, get robbed. Nobody deserves to be raped and murdered. Exactly. Obviously, uh, we talked about that the libertarian com community is quite divided on uh, David Linehound, but he has got an outpouring of support from the broader right-wing community because, as we mentioned, Sarah Hansen-Young, she's, <laughs> she's definitely not the most liked uh, politician, and I would say she's definitely the most hated green. I mean, the, the Sarah Hansen-Young is a Fruit Loop Appreciation Society, is a popular... <laughs> 
right wing <laughs> Facebook uh, group, uh, which I'm a member of. And we should remember that Sarah Hansen Young won the, the Unshackled uh, 2017 uh, Triggered Feminist Award. <laughs> I remember that. I um I, I'm pretty sure I voted for that actually. It's like mm. Sarah Hansen Young, definitely the most triggered feminist. Because we were looking at just Australia, if I recall, we weren't really looking at much at overseas. Yeah. But some um, definitely. Although in fairness to SHY, uh Lee Rhiannon is still more hated. She's hated by the left as well as by as by the right. Oh that is uh, I, I disagree there. I mean, Lee Rhiannon do, it doesn't, do, it doesn't get much mainstream attention. Us, pol uh, you know, political followers, we know how much of a uh, hardcore, you know, commie uh, she is. But people see Sarah Hansen Young triggered on the TV all, all the time. You know, debating Pauline Hanson, and they just roll their eyes. Uh, yeah, that's that's fair enough. I mean, I, I still hate Rhiannon more than Hanson Young, but... Well, yeah, she'd send us all to the gulags. <sighs> she wouldn't even send me the gulag. She'd just have me shot. <laughs> <laughs> me and Damien, we, we wouldn't even get sent to the gulag. We'd just be shot in a uh, bullet between the eyes and quickly. You'd be sent to the gulag. <laughs> Other places where uh, David Lionhelms received support is uh, from... P uh, personalities such as Avi Yemeni, uh, Neil Erickson, and the, the various pages that, that he runs, and also other popular right-wing pages such as the, the Stand Up for Australia uh, pages, and Lionel himself said I've had an uh, outpouring uh, of uh, a support because a lot of people are really sick of, you know, these radical feminists demonizing men uh, in general, and... <laughs> But the thing is, though, he, he's got all this, uh, this new uh, support, uh, but the thing is, will it translate to votes? Because as we know, the, the right-wing minor party uh, vote is, is quite fractured and still quite small, unless your name is uh, Pauline Hanson, that's what Cory Bernardi has, has found out as well. So that's the, the big question out of all this. That's a hard one, actually. Because yes, the the, the right-wing minor party vote is fractured, very fractured, and still fracturing because people won't work together. They will have their egos and they will be, they'll be the top cat in a friggin', you know, out of five people. But I digress. In regards to Lanhelm and the LDP, now you said yourself that the LDP is split internally in regards to their opinions on Lion Hell. Or a libertarian was... movement in general. Mm. So look, he'll be he'll be he'll remain at the I'm pretty sure he'll be still number one Senate candidate. Yeah, yeah, he will be. So it's not going to affect his re election chance or it's not going to affect his pre selection chances. He's already been it's pretty much a fair accompli. But the people who will vote for him will probably vote for him regardless of what he says or does. I he might gain a little bit of support from people from other people who might not otherwise vote for the libertarians yeah. but it will be marginal at best I don't think it's hurt him but I don't think it's helped him either mm. and you know if he doesn't get back here at least he's gone out with a bang <laughs> oh he's got a lot more in him than just this you know stop shagging man Sarah comment that he made it was a little bit off color but eh, it's parliament yeah. I mean, well, you know, it's just yeah. a <laughs> I mean, what do you think of the argument that it's not good for the dignity of of parliament and that our politicians need to be more civil you see this is hard because there's there's two there's two points to this on the one hand there are standing orders in parliament for a reason you can't just call someone for example a sanctimonious windbag like peter costello did to kim beasley in the 2000s on the other hand, heckling is part of the Westminster tradition, and you to be to function well in the Westminster Parliament system, parliamentary systems, you've got to be able to give as good as you get. Sarah Hansen Young clearly cannot give as good as she gets, um, which is why she's triggered by Lanham's comments. But then you look at if you ever saw the British version, the original version of House of Cards. You'll see some examples of heckling um, that are still within the rules, but that's more witty than crude. 
um, the comment that um, Lionhelm made, the stop shagging men comment, was um, comes under heckling. Yeah, it wasn't something I would have said. Well, unless I'd been drunk at the time, but it was still a comment that comes under heckling rather than unparliamentary conduct. In overseas parliaments, like they get into to fist fights with each other, and <laughs> I, I, I know what then when that's been shown in Australia, there's because everyone likes a drama. That's why that's why we're talking about this. Why the uh, probably the the media secretly lies this, even though they're 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 tut tutting Lionhelm. They're they're sort of like, yeah, I wouldn't mind more, you know, Biff in in Parliament. <laughs> That's what we have state of origin for, Tim. We don't need biffing in Parliament. Let the sports people get at our vicarious frustration with everything. And and, and that biff in overseas parliaments, it, it's actually about you know proper policy. They're, they're, they're policy disputes that just get a bit physical. Uh, sometimes there, there there are. Sometimes it's more basic than that. Sometimes it's more about oh, such and such is going to be prime minister or president now. Hell no! Which is what happened to the guy who was put in after um, Yanukovych was ousted in the Ukraine. Arseny, oh, I forget what his surname was, but Arseny something. He was the interim prime minister. He's going to be made interim president. And you actually see there's actually a video, not just on Live Week, but in general. Um, general YouTube of him being he comes up to the podium and he gets they try to drag him and he's like holding on for dear life to the to the podium he's like I have the right of speech here I have the right to speak here and then it just gets, just generates this massive brawl it's it's great I, you know I can I can appreciate that uh, uh, without being without my um my sense of decorum I can actually appreciate that. But my sense of decorum kicks in and says, you know what, meh, nah, it shouldn't be done. So where are we at now? So Sarah Hansen young she initially wanted an apology, now she's demanding uh, compensation, otherwise she'll she'll sue. And uh, Ooh, Lionhelm so said, he would, he's, well, of course he's not going to apologise because he, he wouldn't mean it. And he challenged her to, to sue and uh, said about the Senate censoring him, uh, bring it on. Now, both parties have set up a legal uh, GoFundMe's, which uh, unfortunately at this stage, Sarah Hanson Young has uh, raised more uh, at the moment. So it's going to be an interesting uh, lawsuit. And I hope Sarah Hanson Young's prepared for because she, she's basically suing because she feels she's being slut shamed and she has to basically prove that she's you know not promiscuous <laughs> she like, is not promiscuous and, and if you, if, yeah if you followed yeah. like defamation cases before like you have to get into the nitty-gritty to basically uh prove your point well like i said i think it was last week i said it um the i mean i've heard the rumors about sarah hansen young I so, haven't. There, there's probably lots of rumours in Parliament that uh, we're not aware of. Hell, we didn't even know that you know Barnaby Joyce was was well, it wasn't confirmed that he was having an affair until uh, earlier this year. Well, yeah, until someone took a photo of her on a hunch and she was like, oh, "Vicky Campion, she's a yeah, yeah." No, 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 it's um, not Vicky. The journalist who took the photo mm. on a hunch mm. had this hunch that there was uh, an affair going on between her and Barnaby. But, you know, that's the thing. Sometimes it just comes down to hunches. That's what happened in Barnaby and Vicky's case. In the in this case, however, there are a lot more rumours going around. I mean, it's not spoken of in polite society. No, there, there's, a, and there's a protection racket most of the time in Parliament where they they, they cover for each other. They're because if they know if, like, one person's outed, then they'll all be outed. It'll be a free-for-all. Exactly. Just remember Michaelia Cash's comments Green in snap, her yeah. peak about yeah. Bill Shorten and the women in his office, supposedly. You know. Yeah, and she was protected by parliamentary privilege when she said that. Mm, exactly. And there's a lot of stuff that's said under parliamentary privilege that is protected. Mm. And the thing is, you know, the Greens hate... I, I'm going diver... to digress here for a second, if that's okay. The Greens hate parliamentary privilege. That's why they want so desperately to sue Lionhelm. When George Christensen, the member for Dawson, made his comment about Gary Dowsett, quoted him word for word in Parliament, 
they said, oh, this is an abuse of parliamentary privilege. Well, no, it's not. It's part of the agenda being, it's part of the dis policy debate. It's fair game to be discussed. What the, um, what, of the arch what one of the architects of the Safe Schools program has said, and if you haven't seen the comments already, look them up. Well, there's still a lot to go in this uh, episode. We'll see uh, how the, the legal action or if this legal action uh, unfolds, but I think we've brought our audience uh, up to speed uh, uh, about everything. So thanks once again, Michael, for uh, discussing it with me. Thank you, Tim. And of course, at the, the end of every show, I promote the, the tour uh, by uh, Stefan Molyneux and Lauren Southern, that, but there's been a few hiccups in getting uh, Lauren Southern a visa to Australia and uh, New Zealand. Uh, her 408 uh, visa application into Australia is uh, still pending. She did apply temporarily for an ETA, so she could do some tourist uh, work here, but that uh, uh, was uh, knocked back. So there is uh, a bit of concern if she'll uh, make it to Australia. Uh, while it looks like she's in the clear for to get into New Zealand after she was uh, initially uh, denied or oh, automatically denied entry because she'd been banned from uh, the uh, the UK. Um, they just need to define a venue in Auckland now, since uh, they're not allowed to use council buildings now. The the thing is with the whole. You know, there are a lot of people saying that uh, it was deliberately sabotaged. Um, you know, some people were saying that. I don't think it was deliberately sabotaged. I think it was just an oversight and some bureaucracy deciding, oh, you're not technically here for that, so we can't give you that visa, but you should apply for the other visa, this one over here. You know, that, that, that'll be fine. That'll be fine, you know. Because a lot of governments, not just in the Anglosphere, but in the world in general, will knock back visa applications if you are, say, you're applying just for a tourist visa, for example, but you're actually doing journalism work. And that is what's happened to a few ABC journalists who went to Indonesia um, mm. in Let's the 2000s. Let's not what, forget what happened to Yasmin abdul Magid when she went to the United States. Yeah, I'm glad they booted her out. <laughs> Uh, I think we but, all are. Uh, most people are saying, I, as if you know, Peter Dutton is going to uh, deny her uh, the 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 four hundred eight visa. I mean, it's it's Peter Dutton we're talking about. Mm. Also depends on the advice he receives. Yeah, but at the end of the day, uh, he gets to make the uh, the final decision. So fingers crossed. But uh, for updates uh, about the tour, um, you can uh, visit the the organisers website, which is axiomatic uh, events. Indeed, it's a good website as well. Another big name we hope we won't uh, won't have any trouble coming down under is former UKIP leader Nigel Farage. Who knows with the uh, the way that Brexit is going at the moment, he could be uh, UKIP leader again. Well, he is due to uh, come this September, visiting Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, and Auckland as well. So tickets, including various VIP passes, can be booked at nigellive.com.au. Also, don't forget uh, if you want to take the Unshackled even further and help keep us doing what we're doing. We can't do it without you. Please consider becoming a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled and you some, can score some awesome rewards in the process. We've got a big change coming up for The Unshackled at the end of the week, which I hope you will all embrace. So stay tuned for that. But until next time, thanks once again for your company. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.